today I wanted to share the top five LSAT retake strategies. I know that, of course, LSAT scores came out today. A lot of folks, as always, are considering a retake, and I highly recommend retaking, especially if you've only taken the LSAT once or twice before. You can improve significantly upon a retake with a bit more time to study. And even if you get just a point or two more on the LSAT, that could be worth thousands of dollars in scholarship money and, of course, possibly getting into a better law school as well. Law schools do not average multiple LSAT scores. They only take the highest. And so there is this built-in incentive to retake. The reason that law schools only take the highest is because that's what gets sent over to U.S. News for the ever-important U.S. News rankings. So even if a law school says they consider multiple, what does consider really mean? When you look at the incentives, let's look at what they actually end up doing. And the stats show that students, even with a big discrepancy, the higher score wins out. That's what gains them admission in the end. The lower score does not get averaged with the other one. Law schools would have no reason to do that. So it just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, without further ado, here are the top five LSAT retake strategies. So we've got redoing prep tests, getting more prep tests, identifying your weak areas, getting a study plan, and looking at what you'll do differently next time. That's the overview. I'm going to go deeper onto each one here. So the first is redoing prep tests. Occasionally, I'll have folks say to me, they've done every LSAT prep test under the sun. Their results upon a redo are going to be contaminated. They'll be affected. They're going to get an inflation of some kind. What should they do? And so, of course, my first question is, did you really do them all? We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, assuming that you've done all 89 numbered exams, plus the handful that are unnumbered, my question for you would be, did you get perfect 180s on all of them? Did you understand everything 100% with no ambiguity at all? No guessing? You got it with time to spare? If so, fantastic. That's a very rare person. Even me personally, that wouldn't happen to me. I couldn't do all 89 plus numbered exams and get perfect 180s on all of them. Everyone makes mistakes. So when you're making a mistake, look at why. Redo those exams. The point of doing an exam is not simply to measure yourself. It's to better understand the mistakes you're making. That's where the Socratic review method comes in. I've got plenty of material covering this in more depth. I've got other videos on the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel. And of course, I go into far more depth on that Socratic review method in my LSAT Unplugged course as well. So level up your review process as you're redoing these exams. Secondly, getting more prep tests. Of course, there are 89 numbered exams, but there are also a handful of exams that are unnumbered. There's the free June 2007 LSAT prep test PDF. There are the super prep exams, super prep A, B, C, and C2. There's also the official LSAT prep test with explanations, which is the February 1997 exam. That's a little bit hard to get for some time. Sometimes it's, under, it was, uh, it's out of print, but you dig around, you may be able to find it. I think Law Hub has it. There's also a lot of exams outside of Law Hub. Law Hub, for some reason, only go, starts off with exam 19 or so. There's exams one through 18. A lot of those exams are available in the first book of LSAT prep tests, the 10 actual official LSAT exams available on Amazon. They didn't put it into Law Hub because of optical character recognition issues. I hope they'll uh, release it there eventually. In the meantime, though, that one, you want to get it in books. Number three, retake strategy, identify your weak areas. Don't just take exam after exam and measure yourself and move on to the next one. Look at what are you getting wrong? What are you having difficulty with and why? You may see some trends in the question types you get wrong. Maybe you have trouble with LSAT parallel reasoning questions, for example, or grouping logic games, or pattern games, or curveball games, or science reading comprehension passages. Whatever it is, if there's a question type that you just don't like, you want to focus more on that type, not less. It might be fun to play to your strengths, but you're going to get bigger gains, a bigger return on investment in the time you spend going over questions that gave you difficulty in particular. So focus there, review those specifically, drill them on the side, in addition to doing, of course, more full-length timed exams to work on your pacing and endurance. Number four, get a study plan of attack. Don't just do exam after exam by default and going on to the next ones. Of course, doing exams and reviewing them is great, but that's not all you want to do, especially if you don't have a solid foundation yet. You want to make sure you're building the foundation first, getting a solid understanding of each 
logic game question type, each logical reasoning type, and the different types in reading comprehension, like global versus local versus inferential questions, getting more comfort, more familiarity with science passages, humanities passages, and such. And so that's why I created my LSAT study plan course to break down for you exactly what to be doing every single day over the course of your prep, whether you're taking the LSAT in one month, two months, or three months, whatever it may be, I've broken down for you exactly what to do every single day, specifically what problems to complete, what videos to watch in my course, what articles to read and such. I've broken it all down for you there, but you can also create your own study plan. The point is have some kind of plan of attack. Don't just go with whatever feels good that day or just going through the exams in numerical order. There are better strategies you can use. Finally, number five, when you're retaking, look at what you'll do differently next time. Don't just do the exact same thing and expect different results. That's the definition of insanity, right? Much better to say, hey, here's what I did right. Here's what was working. But alternatively, this other thing didn't really work for me. The strategy didn't work for me, but there's some resource I haven't yet used that I want to take advantage of and invest in this time around. I don't just want to go back to the same books that didn't work the first time or the same course that didn't work the first time. You got to change your approach. If you didn't review in enough depth previously or didn't review at all, obviously, that's a big thing to change. And again, look at the Socratic review method for more on that. Anyway, folks, I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to reach out if you need anything at all. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.